and welcome back to another video and today I'm back with another true crime tunes but before we get into today's case I just want to do the usual so my name's Amber I upload beauty fashion and lifestyle content if that is the type of content that you would like to watch then why not hit that subscribe button and come along and join my little family and if you're already part of the family then why not make sure that notification bell switched on just so you're notified of whenever I upload a video and why not give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and now we can get into today's case and today's case is actually a very sad one it about a family murder and I've not covered a family murder before this is actually a case known as the McStay family murders and this actually went unsolved for quite a little while before I get in and discuss the case I just like to do a little quick disclaimer that I do not mean any disrespect to anyone mentioned in this video and I also like to say that this video does contain adult content if you are not into these sort of videos then that is fine click off this video and go back to my channel and watch something else that is more suitable for you but I always like to pre-warn you before I get in. So the McStay families were an American family who were found murdered in the desert near Victoriaville, California on November 13th of 2013. The McStays actually disappeared from their home in Fallbrook, California in February of 2010. So the McStays were actually missing for three years before their bodies were discovered and people didn't actually know what happened to them. They didn't know if they were dead or alive. The disappearance was widely reported across national news stations and across various television programs in the United States. So in 2010, Joseph McStay, aged 40, and his wife, Summit, aged 43, lived in Fallbrook, California, with their sons, Giannini, who was aged four, and Joseph Jr., who was aged six. So on February 4th of 2010, Summit McStay and her husband, Joseph, and their young sons actually disappeared from San Diego, California. The McStay family of four was living in a happy life for as far as everyone knew on the outside looking in. They had a really happy life. The couple got on really well, you know, they were just living their best life. Recently moved into a new house and they were renovating to turn it into their dream home. Joseph had a newly successful business which designed and installed water fountains. That meant that he had a flexible work schedule so that he could spend more time at home with his family. So on February 13th, when the family hadn't been heard from in nine days, Joseph's brother actually went to the house because this was unusual for the family. And when he turned up at the house, there was actually no signs of break uh, breaking. The only thing that the brother noticed that there was a partially opened window which he used to get into the house. So when he got inside, the house he he found what he thought was a relatively normal scene the family had moved into the house three months earlier so they'd not long been living in the home and they were in the process of doing renovations when inside the house joseph's brother found no sign of the family but he did notice that the dogs were left out in the yard but there was food for the dogs so he assumed someone was looking after the dogs in the home because the dogs were the family's pride and joy he left a note for the people who were looking after the dogs to give him a call because he was obviously concerned and just wanted to check up to check the family were okay. Later that night he actually received a phone call from animal control because it was actually animal control that had noticed the dogs were starving in the yard and they had gone in to feed them. Someone had reported that the dogs had been left outside for over a week without food so obviously they just wanted to check up on the dogs to make sure that they were okay. So when he discovered that it was animal control that was feeding the dogs he actually found this very alarming and decided to phone the police to report the family is missing. On February 15th, 11 days after the family was last heard from, the police decided that they were going to search the next day's home the police found it very an alarming scene and so did investigators. It was difficult to determine whether or not there'd been a struggle. However, something was amiss because there was raw food left out on the top, which seemed to indicate that the family had had to leave in a hurry. There was also a, ca a carton of eggs left on the counter and two child-sized balls of popcorn on the sofa. There were no signs of foul play or any forced entry. There was no evidence to determine where the family went or why they had left. Earlier in the week, before the family disappeared, Summer had actually made plans to visit a sister who had recently had a baby. Additionally, a family friend was helping paint the house and left with the intention of returning on Saturday, February 6th to finish the job. The family did not have appear to have had any plans to be gone that day and on Thursday, February 4th, the last day that the McStay family was he heard from, Joseph had attended regular work meetings. 
Cell phone records indicate that he drove home after the meeting and he continued to make calls into the evening. Investigators made a break in the investigation when a neighbour's security camera caught them at Stay's car leaving their home on the evening of February 4th. The car never returned home. Investigators also discovered the same car had been towed on February 8th for a parking violation near the Mexican border. Investigators immediately seized the car and searched it for evidence. Inside, they found a relatively normal scene. There were a number of toys, there were the children's car seats, um, which were in the normal positions, and the front seats were adjusted to Sam and Joseph's relative sizes. There were no signs of foul play, but the fact that they had left the car and toy four days after leaving home so close to the Mexican border was bizarre. In addition, security cameras from the parking lot from which the car was towed confirmed that the car had not arrived there until the afternoon of February 8th. So that was four days after the family had been on accounted for. Investigators discovered that neither of the family's cars had travelled into Mexico in years so they believed that the family had not driven into Mexico during the unaccounted days. The family and friends of the mixed day family did not expect them to be at the Mexican border because Summer had stated that she felt Mexico was too unsafe to go to and she would never go there willingly. However, there was a new discovery on the border surveillance and there was a video that changed the course of the investigation. Investigators found four people who actually resembled the mixed day family walking across the border at approximately 7pm on the 8th of February, which was less than two hours after the car was found. The video showed a male adult and a child walking in front of a female adult with another child. The size of the people appeared to match the McStay family. When the family members were called in to identify the people on the video, they actually had very mixed reactions. They recognised that the children in Summer were the people in the video, but Joseph's mother believed that if the man in the video were Joseph, his hair would have been much bushier, so they weren't sure that the man in the video was Joseph. Otherwise, the family did look identical to the McStays, and they were dressed very similarly to how the McStays would have dressed, and the children were wearing similar hats to the ones they had previously been photographed in. But several family members did not believe that the man in the video was Joseph, although investigators did believe that the family was likely the McStays, based on analysis of their family photos and home videos. Investigators believe that their family had willingly crossed the border and there was no indication that they were under any sort of distress and when the investigators did search for passport records of the family they discovered that Joseph had a valid passport that had not been used before or after his disappearance but Summer's passport had actually expired and the investigators could not find any records that she'd applied for a new one. In addition neither of the children had passport and investigators found one of their birth certificates which was actually left behind in the home. It would have been impossible for the mixed days to travel into the Mexican border without sufficient documents. Investigators actually discovered that Summer had changed her name multiple times throughout her life, though simply changing her name is not an indication of anything sinister. It did stir up a number of theories that Summer was responsible for the disappearance, though it was possible that Summer was using a different name. There are no records of passports under any of her other names. The entire case actually left investigators and loved ones completely bamboozled. So in April 2013, the San Diego Sheriff's Department turned the case over to the FBI which was more equipped to investigate the case that was involved in other countries. On November 11th 2013 a motorcyclist actually found sadly um, four sets of human remains buried in two shallow graves in the desert near Victoriaville in California. The family had been beaten to death and the family was identified later on as the mixed day family. Joseph had actually had an electrical cord wrapped around his neck Giannini had at least seven blows to the skull. Also in the graves was a three pound sledgehammer. Two days later, two sets of remains were officially identified as those of Joseph and Summer McStay. The deaths were ruled a homicide and the San Bernardino County authorities said that they believed the family had died of blunt force trauma inside their home. On November 5th of 2014, Chase Merritt, who was a business associate of Joseph McStay, was arrested and charged with four counts of murder after his DNA was discovered inside the McStay's vehicle. Vehicle. Prosecutors claim that the McStays were murdered by Merritt for financial gain and Merritt is documented as writing checks totaling $21,000 on Joseph Business's account after he went missing. What in the world possesses someone to murder their business partner and not only just their business partner, their business partner's full family, two little boys for money?
that is just pure greed. Merritt had actually used the money to fuel his gambling addiction, so he did have a really bad problem with addiction, formed at nearby casinos where he had lost thousands of pounds. Merritt's trial had been delayed multiple times due to Merritt attempting to represent himself and repeatedly firing his attorneys. In 2018, the trial was actually postponed again so that his current defence attorney could do more investigating. Merritt remained jailed without bail. Merritt's trial finally begun on January 7th, 2019, and on June 10th, 2019, a San Bernardino County jury found Merritt guilty of murdering the McStay family. On June 24th, the jury recommended that Merritt be sentenced to death. The court upheld the jury's recommendation, and Merritt was actually sentenced to death on January 21st of 2020. So this case is actually a really um, current one to actually get wrapped up and to go to court. I just find this whole case absolutely awful. Those, f for three whole years, that family, I know there's other cases where people go missing for years and years and years, but it wasn't just one person, it was a full family that went missing for three years, and because there was no indication that they were dead, like, this fam like their family probably assumed they were still alive, and the whole time, under their noses, their own family member's business partner had murdered, like, Joseph's own business partner had murdered him for financial gain to fuel addiction like, I know addiction is a real thing and I know addiction is a struggle but who in the right mind kills a full family to fuel a gambler like I don't know I'm sure with stranger things have happened but it's just absolutely awful I'm, I'm really glad that he's paying for what he's done and I really hope that the McStay family and their whole um extended family have found peace I just think this is such a sad case I would love to know your thoughts and feelings on this one let me know that down below I hope you've enjoyed watching this case and I shall see you in the next one thanks so much for watching <music>